Welcome to another episode of Deliberations with Sonia. Today, we're going to be discussing why are black women single? This is a three-part series, baby, because we got to get into the women, part two, the men, part three, we've got to come together. Let's get at it. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Deliberations with Sonia. And I'm your girl, Sonia. And today, we're going to have to just get straight into it because why are black women single? It is just a necessary conversation. And when I tell you, I've been watching so many videos and podcasts, and it just seems like the only thing on anybody's mind. And then there's these guys, they're all out here, Steven Speaks and blah, 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 these other people. And, and some of it is relevant, but some of it's just, ooh, white noise. So what I want to do today is have a discussion about a real discussion about real issues, real she, about why black women are single. And I want you guys to like, share, subscribe, because this is going to end up being a three-part series. And the first part is going to be about why black women are single. Okay. But then part two, which is February 6th, is going to be about empowering black men to support black women. And then part three, February 13th, right before Valentine's Day, we got to get to that meat, to that meat, meat, meat. It's going to be about unlocking the power to your sexual healer. Now, let's not act like we are children. We're not children, okay? Sex is wanted, needed, and required in any healthy relationship. However, this is where the men are from Mars, the women are from Venus comes in. So we're going to hit that up right before Valentine's Day. Maybe give you a little tune-up so that you can get some. (laughs) Anyway. I digress. So let's just get into this episode. So as as I was looking at some of the different issues and some of the different things in these videos, I listened to this one lady and she was going on and on about how basically black women are masculine and we need to pretty ourselves up for the men. Then there was another one that said, Black women don't know their place, don't know their role. Gender issues, right? And I want to preface everything that I'm saying before I even get into it, okay? Because we are not one size fits all in the black community, okay? Number one, what goes for one, don't go for the other. What go for... This age group and this generation don't go for the other. So I'm not trying to paint a broad brush. I just want to put out some real food for thought because I, I'm a little perturbed at these people that keep, oh, like when Steve Harvey made that book, uh, act like a lady, think like a man. What the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, why you want to think like a man? You think like a lady, all right? <laughs> anyway, so that is one of the things that I really wanted to try to address. So while I'm babbing on, let's just get into it. Now, the number one thing, and and y'all know me, I do research. (laughs) So I went to the National Institutes of Health, and I went to a couple of other government agencies to keep track of these things. And then I went to some of the black men, blah, 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 and maybe having these surveys. Yeah. So according to our black men, (laughs) the number one reason that black women are single, and when I say this, come on now, I'm not just saying black women are single. I'm saying black men ain't stepping up to the mic. So let's give a little bit for everybody. Let's bring this shit around. (laughs) For everybody. Okay. So education and employment. 
Now, I've said on this show many times before, and I'm going to keep saying, and you don't need me to say it, you can watch any old TV show, and that's there too. Black women, we have achieved a very, at this point, at this point in, in this century, we've received, we've achieved a certain level of success. We've achieved a certain level of employment and income earning ability. With that, there are some women who believe that because they're the breadwinner, let's just say, that things can be different or they can be in charge or whatever. And it's not, like I said, I'm not, my language may get let. I'm very careful about my word choice, but I'm just trying to get through this without wasting too much of y'all time. When I say let, I'm triggering myself. (laughs) Okay, because you ain't going to let me do that. I'm going to do it. (laughs) <laughs> and you go deal with it. <laughs> that comes to my book. But y'all gonna talk about that later. Auntie How, yeah, as black women, and I'm, I'm going to speak from my experiences. I've been married and divorced twice. However, neither of my marriages nor the divorces that came after were in regards to education, employment, whatever. Both my husbands were providers. They took care of me. <laughs> I had to do nothing. <laughs> Both of them got mad at me because I was doing too much. But you know, huh? you've got to live your life. You know what I'm saying? Some people just don't want to die and be like, what you accomplish? I make a good ass biscuit. <laughs> I'm not And nothing's wrong with the ladies making biscuits. I'm just saying. Everybody's different. So anyway, but no, those weren't my issues. Those issues were a little more nuanced. However, we're talking about single ladies who have never been married, I think. Or we could be talking about people like myself who've been married and divorced. But (laughs) I don't think we count because I don't know that I want to go through that again. Marriage is expensive. You know what I'm saying? You gotta split up, up, get rid of houses. You know what I'm saying? I had two houses to deal with and two it was just too much. Anyway, so I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about y'all. So this is the statistics on these things. In the United States, there are a hundred women for every 90 men. So you could do the math on that, right? It's my what 10%. Yeah, you're talking about a good 10% more women than men. However, when you think about that and you think about different localities, see, because if you was probably somewhere in North or South Dakota, you'd be like, hey, party over here. And then everywhere. <laughs> Might not all be black, but it's a lot of them. Anyway, so that accounts for something, right? Because you have... Men being able to be more choosy. And it's not even that they're choosy. It's just that they have more options, right? A man is always going to have more options than a woman. Why? Because a really good man, he's not going to be coming at a woman for her education and her employment. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Whereas women will overlook men who have poor education, poor employment. And so we make the pot very, very, very much smaller. So with that in mind, I do want to pull out the statistics and get into some historical context about why Black women are single. Now, you got to think about the root cause of some of these things, right? And so when I think about the root cause And this was something that, you know, was in some of the historical databases, which it doesn't need to be. But I was shocked because (laughs) let these people tell us they don't want our history nowhere. So I digress. Let's get to the point. So when I hear these radio shows and I hear these black men talk about she too hard and she too this and she too that. Honey bunny, did you forget? And we was raised through slavery. 
Okay. And, and because of that, the mothers, the grandmothers, the mothers before us mothers taught their daughters to be strong. Why? Let's see. Working out in the fields, taking care of other people's kids, your kids dying, massa dragging you in his bed whenever he wants to. You're having kids with this man. They done label him a buck and he good for birthing big old babies. So now they just done got him around here screwing everybody around the plantation at the next plantation and the plantation. People paying for him to screw people all over the place. And y'all talking about we too strong. What you think we're going to be? And then when we come out of that, we come out of that and black men are still being murdered, incarcerated, lynched, everything else. So as a black man, you need to ask yourself, why are you saying that we as black women are too hard because I don't want to spin around in this chair and click my heels two times and say that we out of slavery when I look around here and I see black men purposefully absent from their children's lives. Purposely around here popping out babies everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Mass ain't got you doing that. You doing that because you want to. And you wonder why black women mad? Ain't nobody got time for you to grow up. Okay, you old enough to put your penis into someone's JJ and pop out a baby, then you need to get your butt at home and take care of that child. And you don't need to be to my, oh, she just too mean. Okay, because she acting like your mama. Yeah, because you acting like her child. And what? I didn't expect that to come out like that, but <laughs> I got in my feelings, you know what I'm saying? But I don't like that. Stop telling these women they too controlling, they too this and they too that. Step up to the mic, man. Step up to the mic. You know what I'm saying? Black women, are, we, we, you know what I'm saying? We, we do not have the luxury of being all dainty and uh, 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 uh. Now, granted, we in a, my mom and dad spoiled the bajuki out of me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? You know, but that might be the all of us didn't get that. Okay. And so when we're talking about um gender roles, right? So this is another thing. So then you have these men who say, You act too much like a man. No, I act too much like somebody who got to handle my business. Okay. I don't have time to be waiting for someone to come handle the business for me. No one's gonna come handle the business for me. I have to wait for you to decide that I am worthy for you to help me create a life and a family for these children, for you to wait for, for me to wait for you to put my children in a good school, get them a good education. And I got to wait for you to sell your wild oats. You wasn't sowing wild oats when you was making these babies up in here. So we need to stop it with that ginger roll gender roles as it comes to black women or any women even white women you know what i'm saying if you out here it take two to make a baby in a family okay so if you out here putting your wick up in people making children and being so weak-minded that you do not want to accept the consequences of what you have done they make condoms and women and men can wear condoms, honey. But you know, I'm a little different because I'm like, uh-uh. You, you were just not, but you know, I'm a little different because I'm like, uh-uh. Stop letting people, young ladies, put you into a place where you feel less than or you feel like you have to fake who you are. You have to dumb yourself down to be with some man because i'm gonna tell you let me tell you what that man is wake <laughs> fucking wake okay ain't nobody got time for that okay so 
you have to understand that in this world, you you have to accomplish some things, get some things done. And, and we know this. You know, we've been taking care of heading the families, unfortunately, a large portion of our community, not everybody, you know what I'm saying? My dad was the person in my house, and I ain't gonna say I understood all this because my mom ain't doing nothing. But cook. <laughs> she cook good too, but my dad, he could cook good too. But anyway, you should be happy. I've always been a strong black woman, is that what they call it? Okay. And both the people I was married to was happy with. <laughs> they was like, mm. <laughs> people messing with me. Things ain't going right. So, y'all, I'm like, go and take a nap, baby. I got you. Okay. And then, it's like, here go the reins back. Now, I'm going to go take a nap and go shopping and have fun. Mm. So, you know, we, we should be able to do that. You know, we're like Bonnie and Clyde out here. You know what I'm saying? I got your back. You got my back. That's what we're supposed to be. You should embrace strength and vitality and, and just resilience out here in this world. Because, honey, let me tell you, they don't want us out here. They do not want us. So, with that, I'm going to get to this next part. So, when you talk about gender... Fluidity, that's what the National Institute of Health calls it. And they get into the idea that women can carry on men roles. And I was actually looking at that special with Martha Stewart. Oh, that's my girl. Anyway, her husband left her for a worker in her house. You think Martha stopped working? You think Martha stopped whatever? No, Martha was about that business, okay? And when she went to federal prison, she was like, I'm paying that shit, okay? I'm going to keep this money. I can do six months. I'm going to wrote a whole new recipe book. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, you may say that's rare in the white community, but it's not rare in our community. It, it's, it's actually at this point in time, 2024, it's the norm. And why is it the norm? Let's see. Oh, because a lot of men have left their families, left their children, left their households to fend for their freaking selves. <laughs> And just like Martha, they like, <laughs> look, I can do this all by myself. So when a new man show up and he like, oh, you being too, get your ass out of here. Ain't nobody got time for that. Don't nobody want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Show up ready to get it done. That's what you need to do. So, trust. Mm. This is a big one. So, women... <laughs> Just be driven of my little thing. <laughs> Women have been victims to so much in this world. And from the time we are born, most of our parents, especially our mothers, are always just trying to protect us from men, the bad men, the Rapists, the pedophiles, the, the badass teachers in high school to tell you you ain't going to be shit. <laughs> and you know, you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You black. You dark. As black women, we just catch hell every which direction you could think of. We catch hell out on the playground. We catch hell at the beauty shop. We catch hell on TV. We catch hell in college. We catch hell in high school. We catch hell at the job. And with that in mind, don't, don't, don't ever, don't ever get to a place 
where you are mixing up individual toughness and resilience and having an ability to just shake that shit off. Don't take that for, oh, she did that. No. I, we, us, all. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than taking off the armor of work and the world and going home, putting on your lingerie and just scooching under your man. Because he know what you've been through out there. He got you. That's real, man. That's what real men do. Mm-hmm. It's them little boys that want to be all, oh, oh, you're too much for me. Okay, whatever. Go on here with your long head. Anyway, so let's finish about this trust factor. Distrust in a relationship over these decades centuries in regards to infidelity, financial irresponsibility, desertion, domestic violence, drug and alcoholism, incarceration. What else? And all the other nasty isms on there. Okay? So if there's an ism to be had, <laughs> Black women have had to deal with it. And so I say all this to say that there is a discussion to be had around Black women being fed up. Because, you know what I'm saying, you got like, you know, six eggs in one side, half a dozen in others, they say. Yeah, Black women single, but (laughs) we happy. (laughs) Don't nobody want to deal with these. You know what I'm saying? It's it's one of those things where you have to put it all together and you have to think about it. Like, hmm, black women single. And half of us (laughs) want to stay that way. But yeah, so part two of this series is going to be geared towards the men. Because you guys need to recognize, you need to know. And then, what are y'all doing? You over here, I don't even want to say this because I want to put a disclaimer and a trigger on all of this I'm about to say because I don't know how it's going to shake out. But, you know, a high proportionate number of African-American men are interracially dating. Henceforth, a good proportion Small yet smaller proportion of black women are interracial dating. I believe a bigger pot of African American women won't allow themselves to be with a man outside their race. I'm sort of that bad. <laughs> but it's, you know what I'm saying? You know what it is, what it is. Some of us, trauma. Generational trauma, <laughs> it affects different people, different ways, okay? My parents and my family from Alabama, so <laughs> hmm, I'm a, I carry some fucking trauma, okay? Anyway, so trust is defined as one's expectation of the predictability and dependability of another's actions or un or written statements, right? So basically, this is the deal. This was in the little NIH thing. So I'm going to just break it down to what they're trying to say. The issue becomes this. How can you, as a man, get mad and say, don't nag me? Okay, the nagging is different, totally different. Totally different. Nagging is going to come later in the next title too. But it's not nagging. It's 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 distrust. It's jealousy, envy, anger, 
mistrust, all of that. Now, ladies, some of y'all take it too far. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because these people ain't do that to you. The other men did it. Everybody ain't out here doing this. You know what I'm saying? And that's something I like to just acknowledge. Black men ain't out here doing that. There's some wonderful black men out here. I've met quite a few. That don't mean I want to be with them. It's different compatibility issues. However, you do have to sit back and ask yourself, what am I holding on to, right? What have I not let go? We have to have compassion for our own selves. We have to be able to let go of the pain. I'm going to tell you, to do that, guess what? Sometimes you need to be by yourself. Because I've been, my breakup, I've been by myself for some years. And it ain't even about the breakup no more. It's about me knowing my triggers. Knowing the things that I will and will not stand for. Knowing what I want. What I what I require. Forget what I want. What I require. Because if you don't give me what I require, ain't no sense in us doing that. We wasting time. And I know me. I know me now. And I embrace my flaws even. Because my flaw is this. If we together and you're not giving me what I need, I'm deuces. <laughs> I don't give it no 15 second thought. I'm out. You know what I'm saying? I'm off to the next man. <laughs> That's not funny, but I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because I ain't finna... It's a flaw, but it's my flaw. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You want me to stay all in? Your ass be all in. <laughs> you ain't all in with me. I'm sure the fuck not all in with you. <laughs> but I digress. So what we have to do is we have to know who we are. And as you think about who you are and how you rock, right? Think about this. I was on a date with this dude. And we were talking, I don't even know what she's talking about, but I was just so asking him questions. With the phone, we was talking about one thing, then like at the restaurant, we was talking about something else. And then somewhere in there, I got some misinformation. And so I was like, I thought you had that kid with your wife and blah, blah, blah. And then it was just like, why you interrogating me? <laughs> why I'm interrogating you? Huh. Check, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't gotta interrogate you. That's your fucking life. Them your fucking kids. Okay, you trying to get up in my pants. You don't want to answer my questions, nigga. Bye. Okay. I got questions, and you need to have some answers. Okay. I don't have no reason to lie to you about my baby boys and where they come from. I don't have a reason to lie to you about whether or not. I got to go over here and, and, and give money to this woman for these kids that you also boinking and then want to act like we good. And then what this going to go on? How long this going to go on? You going to go over there, play with the kids, play with the mama, come over here, play with me, play my poo poo, poo go over there, do all that, and then come over here. Then everybody going to have the same venera on dust like ease. <laughs> no! Not about that life. And so these are the things that we have to. So you can't be afraid, ladies. You better, when you want to date with these dudes, just get straight to it. Because I'm not having a sexual relationship with someone that I don't trust. And someone that I don't know. And someone that doesn't know me. And someone that's not going to hurt my feelings or run off with Sally Sue around the corner. Okay? I saw this thing. I saw this on the dating thing. What was it called? Ready Love. And the guy was like, why you getting all up in my business? Why you, you know, I mean, they was at dinner, just like me and the dude. And, and the man was like, why you getting all up in my business? She was like, well, this is Ready to Love. We're on a dating show. And he was like, well, you need to, this is my business. That's my business. And so I'm like, dude, you was just over there at the pool talking about rubbing her booty down and none of that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you want to get in them skins, but she can't know who your baby mama and them. Fuck <laughs> you. This stuff is comical. You just got to laugh about it. So when I, I'm like that lady on Ready to Love. We supposed to be ready to love. I got a checklist. And the checklist ain't a checklist. Like, you don't have to have 
When we're in that second stage, I'm talking you in your forties, fifties. Yeah. People, people, it's not a checklist, but it's just a, I ain't trying to contribute to your child support payments. Real talk. Okay. You screwed up a business and you owe how much money to the IRS? <laughs> Nigga, we not getting married. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not paying that bill for you. <laughs> you cute and the sex is good, but I said no. I might as well go find me another Jody because, man, you ain't finna do this. You taking care of your five grandkids at your house? You gonna need to keep them over there. <laughs> okay, so these are things. Yeah, why you in my business? You wanna be in my bed? I wanna be in your business. I find that to be an easy trade. Anyway, so that's another component. If you're not gonna take the time to build trust, but yet you got these 10% of the extra women out here dropping it like it's hot, they ain't asking no questions. They just like, oh, come on, come on, get it, get it, get it. You know, them pick me. Pick me. I'll take anything you give me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go be with the pick me. Don't try to be with women of substance. I'm about to be 55 in a couple of days. I'm a woman of substance. I am not a pick me. <laughs> I ain't never been a pick me. I love that song. While he was choosing, he was being chosen. Okay? <laughs> no, I do the choosing. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Ooh, I'm going over. I'm going to wrap this up with the top reasons cited by men. And then we're going to get into the men part next. Part two, February 6th. These are top three. And I'm talking the National Institutes of Health. They smushed up a bunch of dudes and was like, we got to get to the bottom of this because the black women household, head of household with children, we, we got to figure it out. So, number one, black men said, while black women are single, not being ladylike. And these are from married men, okay? These, this, this survey was from married Men, not single men, which first I sort of didn't get it. But then I thought that okay, NIH, like, yeah, shit, if you already chose somebody, why you ain't choose the rest of them? So this is why. Not being ladylike in dress and language. That's like cursing and all that stuff. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I ain't tripping on that cursing. However, <laughs> you can't be all at the dang on Ruby Tuesday. Hey, motherfucker. I want some grace. <laughs> I'm not saying people do that, but whom I digress, I have seen it. <laughs> so yeah, not being ladylike, but in dress as well. So basically, just when I, <laughs> I, I am the official auntie, right? Because I'm going to tell you, I am in love with fashion. Clothes, love it all. But I be hooting, tooting, schmooting, booting if I go walk out of here with a stocking on my whole body with a couple of little diamonds on. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to say, if I had to make the stallion body to go with it, I still wouldn't do it. But of course, she's a baby girl, so she could do it if she wants to. But me, I'm a 55-year-old woman. I ain't doing that. I do it in the bedroom, though. Oh, anyway. So, number two, standards too high. This was a good one because this is what these black men were saying. I'm going to sum this up real quick. Basically, they were saying you're not being realistic about where a person is at. You got to meet people where they're at, right? So, if you think about it, neither one of my, I got a law degree. But I be skipping all the way over the bachelor's part. I got an undergrad degree, a law degree, and an MBA. Okay? <laughs> I probably got about 15 years of higher education. Probably more. I don't know. I didn't do math. But the point is, I didn't look at either of the people I married. Ooh, you got that and that. No. When I married my first husband, he hadn't even went to college or nothing. And he wasn't even like completely stable in his career. And then my second husband, he was retired. 
from the military, so I guess that don't count. But he ain't graduated from nobody's college. But he still took care of him. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying, ladies. You got to ask yourself as a prior married woman to men who built houses and did wonderful things. This man wasn't no college graduate, but you know, he was a man's man. You know what I'm saying? He was like, mm, I'm gonna take care of my son. And I was like, hey, bring it on. <laughs> and he was like, you go and save the world with your law firm. And I got all this held down. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, I was out there doing it. <laughs> but that's called partnership. So women, when your standards are so high that you look over people, you never know, honey, <laughs> the dude over there with the restaurant who's a chef, <laughs> some of these chefs is oh, rich, okay? So you, you just have to see how can you be a beneficial partner. You always look down on nobody. <laughs> anyway, also these same men, Later on, I said the women who lower their standards too low. Because these men was like, it'll be a good woman, a woman, you know, who who they may think is blah, blah, blah. But then she over here with a drug dealer. That's lowering your standards. Because a drug dealer may get you a nice fancy car. But when the feds come, <laughs> and pound it and you're gonna be in trouble and you might go to jail anyway unapproachable yeah i'm not gonna say women are some people are unapproachable i just think i've i've been unapproachable all my life and let me tell you the dudes that approach me <laughs> they ready barbie <laughs> they <laughs> they men <laughs> so i'm gonna stay like this <laughs> <laughs> bad attitude. I got a great attitude. But yeah, some people have bad attitude. Y'all need to stop that. Oh, oh, place a higher value on wealthy men. That's not good. Because you placing a higher value on a man ain't placing no value on you. Don't you know anything? Look at Halle Berry and all of these rich women, Mary J. Blige and, and all these people. Okay, these people married to rich people. Some are married to slums. But anyway, the point is, that's they sh money. That's they stuff. And they ain't got to give it to you. You sitting here, I'm going to be with somebody for money. He going to take care of me. No, he not. He not going to take care of you. He going to treat you like a rag doll. And then throw you out the window somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you got to stop chasing what you want. Okay? You can chase what you want, but make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? Make it make sense. If a man with money want to be with you, boo-boo, he going to come for it. And he going to come correct. You run around here. You ain't nothing but a... Anyway. Let me tell you, this is what we're going to do. If I could say anything to my ladies that are single, the most positive thing I could say, aside from everything that I already said, focus on your own personal development. Focus on your own mental health. Focus on your own spiritual growth. Dig deep into yourself and, and figure out how to get past the trauma, how to get past the betrayals. I don't know if your daddy walked out on you or if your mama beat you or if your daddy beat you or if your brother or cousin molested you, whatever the case may be. Take the time to be single, to work on you. Be the best you you can be. And once you the best you you can be, Girl, you can wake up in the morning with a smile on your face, giggling, because life is just so happy. And then when Mr. Right show up, you're going to be in the right headset, the right mindset, and then you'll be happy. Don't let these people out here talk to you about, don't be like this, don't be like that. You sit around here and be a doormat for these men. Let me tell you, it's these new men out here. I ain't even going to say on this thing. I'm supposed to wait till the next episode. But it's these men out here, they're users. Remember that 10% imbalance? 
the pygmies is out here paying people bills and all kinds of stuff. Okay? And these men is like women prostitutes, gigolos, whatever you want to call them. So stay strong. Stay in your strength, black women, because we ain't got time for no fucking short. See you next time. It's been Deliberations with Sonia. My queens, keep your crown on and keep your sword handy because you might need to cut somebody. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I will see you next week. And we're going to talk about these men. They should be holding us down instead of bitching and moaning about us all the time.